to find out from them who people claim he is and then to ask who he thought he was to them. And they were given Peter's answer to Jesus and he makes that good confession. And then Jesus responds to him there in verse 18. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You see, Christ made two promises in this statement. First, he promised to build his church. And secondly, he promised that hell would not prevail against it. So this afternoon, as we often do this, this last week of the month, we'll spend a few moments to offer the invitation for those who might need to reflect on their lives. So this, this term hell here should be rendered Hades. That's the idea that's being brought out. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. This is... Instead of Gehenna, the final resting place, or the final abode of the wicked, sinful men, their souls, this is a general term applying or referencing the realm of departed human spirits. When we die, our flesh goes back to the earth, and our spirits leave our body. And it goes to the Hadean realm. And ultimately, one of two places, either paradise or uh, torment. And then when this life is over after final judgment, Gehenna hell or heaven. But Jesus promises that the gates of Hades or death or hell shall not prevail against the church. Basically, not even death can prevail against the church. Now this is true in two ways. First, we know that Christ shed his blood to purchase or to build his church. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. He only built one church, not the Mormon church, not any other denominational church you can think of, Baptist, Mormon, or Methodist, any of these. We see the character of Satan, and no doubt that he rejoiced in this act of Christ being crucified. After all, he facilitated the death of our Savior. So it would appear that he, he would have won. However, death had no power over Jesus our Savior. In Acts chapter 2, we read there in verses 22 through 24, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. But verse 24, Whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Now why might this be the case? Death is always the adequate punishment for sin. Jesus did no sin, therefore death had no power over him. Thus, Christ is able to be the head of the church. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23. And secondly... Because of this fact, mankind has the ability to be added to that church, Acts 2.47. We don't add ourselves to it. We don't pick the, ch the church of our choice and join ourselves to them. We are added to his body. As members of that church, we have the ability to prevail against death ourselves. This is due to the resurrection of Jesus and our faithfulness to His will. His resurrection provides the possibility. Our faithfulness to His will makes that a reality for us when this life is over. 
Paul reasons this out in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He goes through there, if, if Christ is not raised, we have no hope. And he says that we, are above all men, are most miserable. But, Christ was raised. There is resurrection. Therefore, we have hope. And he, he brings it down to verse 57 of that chapter. Where he points out that we have the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that comes through faithfulness to his word, to the gospel. But we must always apply verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So, Jesus made the promise that one, he would be able to build his church... And he did. He was resurrected from the grave. And he has promised those members of his church that they would survive separation of spirit from the physical body. But only through practical application of his will. When we're found faithful, we have that hope. We have the ability to look past these issues of the flesh and see heaven as our long home, as members of the church who are faithful. If you're not a member of that church, you'd have no hope. It's a sad state to be in, but unfortunately it is your reality. Why not become a Christian this afternoon? If not, at least think about it. Why aren't you becoming a Christian? Why are you not one now? Take the necessary steps to obey the gospel, to become a Christian, to put on Christ in baptism. Or if you are a child of God, but through weakness you've stumbled and allowed sin back into your life, please take the necessary steps to remove that together as we stand and sing.